Welcome! Today I'm going to be going over the Calvan Tools 38900 uh, spark plug insert installer kit for my Ford 5.4 liter. Now this here is just kind of the general overall kit and everything that's included with it. It does come with this one page of instructions here and here's an up close shot so you can maybe stop and pause and take a look at it a little bit closer with everything that's included here and we'll go ahead and set that off to the side. Uh, next up what we have is the cylinder leak detector and what this is for is you need to make sure that your valves are closed and it has a rubber stopper here on this one end and then it has an adapter on the other end so you can hook up like your shop air to it and then a valve so you can open and close it you want to make sure that your valves in the motor are closed your intake and exhaust valves so you don't get metal shavings down inside the motor as you can see here this isn't put together real tight because this is not designed to have a lot of massive air pressure. You want lower air pressure and once that builds up inside the cylinder, it will pop that out verifying that your valves are closed. Now, this here is our guide tool that's included with the kit. And what this does is it helps ensure that your core drill and your tap go down into the cylinder straight and smooth and that you don't get it cross edited it even guides it and holds it straight now the core drill itself is very well made this is what's going to go down in there it's going to actually bore out all your threads it fits nicely into the uh, guide here and it's a nice snug fit there isn't a lot of slop as you can see and that's what really keeps this straight so that you don't have any issues if you did not have this guide there's no way you would get this done properly now you can kind of see it also has these pins up there towards the top those act as a stop so you don't have any issues um, as you're doing this you don't want to go down too far into the cylinder the tap, once again, just like everything else, very well made, sturdy, heavy duty. Um, I've been really impressed with this kit and the quality of it. Now, it includes an E-clip that will actually clip on towards the end. But what happens is, is you can't fit the threaded part of the tap part of this tool in so what you have to do is slide the top in first and then you'll put the e-clip in the slot that's to the furthest outside up next to the hex head then you will put the guide tool as well as the tap down into the opening for your spark plug in that cylinder and then tap it from there and that way it just keeps it nice and straight so that everything is done 100 percent properly as you need it to do so make sure and keep track of that e-clip you're going to need that as you go now these here are all of our inserts it includes eight of them and this here is just kind of let me give you an up close shot so you can get a maybe an up close look at it here this is what the inserts look like they're made of steel they were very well made and i've been impressed with how these are now the spark plug just threads into it and it stops pretty much at about the end but now what we have is all of the threads for the spark plug are engaging the insert and we're adding more threads into the head now to secure it for a thread locker i'm using this time cert 6020 thread locker uh, to secure it in there and then up around the shoulder of the insert i'm using the jb weld to actually help secure this whole thing Now here's our guide tool going into the head and as you can see I kind of noticed it had a little bit of play and I wanted it to be a bit more firm if you will and so I just took some paper folded it up put it in there and that tightened it up in there so I didn't have any further problems. My head is off of the block I have the advantage of being able to just kind of tape it all up here I didn't want to get metal anywhere and so everything was taped off. It's absolutely vital at this point that you make sure your valves are closed and that your piston is down at least two to four Four inches before you proceed or you could cause some damage as I mentioned earlier use the enclosed cylinder leak detector to make sure the valves are closed and then use a bore scope to make sure that your piston is down the two to four inches all right, let's dive right into getting the first hole bored out and ready to go. Now I'm using a 13 millimeter socket uh, with an adapter into my drill here to just go ahead and start boring this hole out. Now I tried to give you two different angles here so you can get a real good feel for how much metal and how many shavings are coming out as you're doing this and what's gonna be going down 
into your cylinder and why it's so vital that you make sure those intake and exhaust valves are closed and that you get all of this blown out with compressed air when the job's done. Now, one of the reasons you'll notice I put a plate down there and I do this on all of these when I'm coring, when I'm doing the core drill, when I'm doing the tap. I wanted to put the plate down so you'll be able to see how many metal shavings are actually collected there at the end to give you a real good idea of what's going on. Notice how effective that the pins are at the top of the core drill. Those keep you from going too far down inside the cylinder and causing damage. And they also keep your core drill from falling down into the cylinder should it come loose from your tool. And this is the amount of shavings collected after boring the first hole. Now this here, I thought I would stop and just show you what it looks like as we're using the core drill here and how far it extends down into the cylinder. Now the picture on the left is with our core drill actually sitting down onto the guide. So this is how far it's going to stick down into the cylinder. And I took a black magic marker and marked it and then I put a tape measure by it. And as you can see, it's about three eighths to a half inch that it extends down into the cylinder. The picture on the far right is where I took the head, set it up on its side, and then took another picture just so you can get a feel for how far that that core drill extrudes down into the cylinder area. And now it's on to the second hole. Now I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to transfer my guide tool over into the second hole. I'm using my little piece of paper once again in there just to act as a spacer that holds it in nice and tight. We're going to go ahead, insert the core drill down in there. Put our drill on and start boring out the next hole. This is the amount that was collected on my plate after boring out the second hole. Now at this point, I'm just gonna back off here for a few seconds and let you watch this process work. This is the amount of shavings collected on our plate after boring out the third hole. Here's the amount of shavings that was collected on our plate after boring out the fourth hole. When we put all four plates together, you can see they're pretty much all the same. Now I'm going to do a quick vacuum before I start tapping the threads. And now it's on to tapping the threads. So I have the tap installed into my guide tool and making sure that I got the E-clip on that last ring there and I'm using my 13 millimeter socket that I used for the core drill. And now I'm just working this in and I'm doing between two and four turns forward and then back it up and then forward and back again. And I'm basing that on the type of resistance I'm getting. You don't want to go too far on it. So if I'm getting a lot of resistance at two turns, I'm stopping there and backing now. This is the amount of threads that were collected on my plate after threading out the first hole. Now here on the far left, I'm just giving you an idea of the factory threads where we started. And in the middle is what it looks like once we've gone through and used that core drill. And finally on the far right is what it looks like once we've gone through and threaded that. And now it's ready for us to install our insert. I went ahead and then tested my threads using my factory insert. 
Then it's on to the second hole. Once again, I'm just taking my tap, placing it into my guide tool, making sure my E-clip is in that very last ring set there, and just working this in, taking my time, and then backing it out so I don't damage anything. Here's the amount of shavings collected on my plate after tapping the second hole. Now at this point, I'm gonna do like last time and I'm just gonna back out here for a few seconds and let you watch me do this process. Here's the amount of shavings collected on my plate after tapping the third hole. Now it's on to the fourth one. Here's the amount of shavings collected on our plate after tapping the fourth hole and when we compare it with the other ones they're all pretty much identical. Now I have to stop and warn you at this point, do not proceed with installing your new plug and insert until you've cleaned all of the debris out from your cylinder and the surrounding area or damage can occur to your motor. Make sure and use an air gun to blow out all the debris out of the cylinder area and then follow that up with a borescope to verify that it's all gone. Now it's time for us to go ahead and get our spark plugs ready for installation. Now in this case I'm just using the Autolite Iridium, oops sorry here, uh, these are the X. P103s and to start with I'm just going to go ahead and put it in my socket for me I find it easier to work with it that way and then I'm going to apply a film of anti-seize on there because we want to be able to get these out of our insert at a later time and at this point all we want to do is just hand tighten the insert over the plug with our anti-seize and then we will go back and we will put our thread locker and our JB weld on and when we tighten everything all at once it will tighten the plug into the insert and the insert into the head and everything will be done to spec at one time. Now I'll move on to getting the rest ready for installation. I'm going to begin mixing my JB weld now so I can get the thread inserts installed. Now these are basically a 50-50 mix so you just add uh, equal parts to both of these solutions here and then I'll just mix it up till it has a nice consistency and it's gray in color and then I am going to use this for the shoulder of our insert and then I'm going to be using the TimeCert 6020 thread locker for the threads now when you get to this point you need to make sure that you're moving kind of quickly this stuff's going to set so make sure and have all your stuff ready to go so that as you start this process you could just keep moving in a fluid motion here so i got the jb weld on here around the shoulder and i'm stopping there i'm not i chose not to do the threads you can do what you'd like um, but i chose to do the jb weld up at the shoulder and now i'm adding the insert thread locker there to the threads and i'll just kind of spread it out a bit with my finger and then it's ready to install now this is an up close shot just so you have an idea of what i did um, there's no torque specs that are listed there in the instructions 
in my manual it calls for between 7 to 14 foot pounds to be able to tighten those to spec in terms of the spark plug uh, so what i did is i set my torque wrench to the 14 foot pounds and did it by feel and quite frankly on all of them i took it up to the 14 and once i got naturally that click going on my torque wrench i stopped there so that's how i did that and there I got that tightened down to where I got that click on my torque wrench. So we have our first plug and insert installed into the head. I thought I would stop here just for a second so you could get a perspective of what's going on down inside your cylinder now that you have your new plug and threaded insert installed. Now up on the top left is just a view going down that cylinder to the top of your plug and insert so you can get a view at that. Um, I made sure to inspect that on each one because I wanted to make sure that my thread locker did did not go up and over the top of the insert and get onto the spark plug and lock my spark plug there so I can't take it out in the future when I want to do a spark plug change on it so make sure and watch out for that now here to the right is the second head I did and basically what I did at this point is I left the factory plug in there on the left and then I installed the new one in there on the right so you can just get an idea and a perspective of the difference between the two and how it's going to look when you get your new spark plug with your threaded insert installed now it's on to the second plug I'm basically just going to repeat the same process again My second plug installation went nice and smooth. Now it's on to my third plug here and we'll get this one installed. Now, unfortunately, I can't seem to find the footage of my fourth plug and insert installation. So we're going to start to wrap things up here. Now, everything went great with this. I didn't have any problems. Everything was installed smoothly and it worked out great. In a future video, we had some issues and I had to go back into the motor for a bearing. And I'll be able to show you how these held up a year later after 7,000 miles. Make sure and tune into that so you can see how they hold up in the long term now once I got this wrapped up I just kind of took all my tape off made sure and get all the dust debris out and made this storage so it's ready for installation so make sure and tune in to one of my next videos we're going to be doing the oil pump from Melling the high volume oil pump and we're going to be installing the heads with new head gaskets as always I appreciate you stopping by and thanks for watching <music>